So, you just bought a Peloton bike. It's new and exciting, and you can't wait to see it, touch it, and exercise with it. But eventually that excitement starts to wear off and you start skipping workouts. One workout turns into two, two turns into three, and so on, and before you realize it, you're sitting on the couch playing video games instead of working out. What? Don't judge me. And all the while, your bike now turns into a very expensive dust collector. If any of this sounds familiar, then stick around, because I think I can help you. What's up guys? Today I'm going to give you five motivational tips to help you stay motivated on your Peloton bike. So before we get started, a little bit about me. I bought my Peloton in March of 2019. It is currently November of 2019, so I've had it for about eight months now. So over the last eight months on Peloton, I've done over 238 workouts, including 142 rides currently. So everything I mentioned here today is also to hopefully keep me accountable as well, because everything I'm talking about, I've gone through with my Peloton bike. The chances are, if you're here right now as well watching this, then you two are struggling with uh, one thing or, or another in life or with your family that is causing you to either uh, not have as much motivation or enough time to get on your Peloton bike. So let's go ahead and get into the very first reason, which is find your why. So what I mean by find your why is you bought the Peloton bike, right? You at least had one really good reason to buy the bike or probably like me, multiple reasons of why you bought the bike. So it helps me a lot to refer back to my original reason. Whether that reason has changed or not, it might have, but you need to go back to why you bought the bike originally and that will help motivate you to hopefully continue to ride and, and just kind of reignite with the passion of why you bought the bike. The reality is over time, it's not gonna be as exciting because it's not new, it's not as fun and not as exciting. But at the end of the day, it's still a great fitness tool, but it's just that. It's only a tool, it cannot do the workout for you. You have to do the workout for you. So you have to set that time aside for yourself and hopefully get on that bike and you know give it your best for that day. If you still can't find your why, I'll tell you what really helps for me. You bought an expensive ass bike. It can either sit there and collect dust or you can get on that bike and ride it and get your money's worth out of it. And generally that helps me because it is an investment and I don't care who's watching this, that bike is expensive. So go pause this video, get on the bike, do a bike ride, come back, press play and thank me down in the comments. So the second tip for the day is to overpower your excuses. So everybody has an excuse of why they shouldn't work out, okay? Whether it's your kid or your kids, your family, significant other, your job, there are so many reasons why, you know, you're like, I'm just too tired to work out today. I went to work, I have nothing left, no energy, blah, blah, blah. Those are all excuses. Unless if you have an extreme condition or something physical that literally you cannot physically ride the bike, then you should have at least one good reason to get on the bike. And that one reason has to be more than all the other negative reasons to get on the bike. So if you can just come up with one good excuse, and honestly, this, this bike, that time is all about you. So seriously, come up with a good reason, even if it's coming back and watching this video. If you have to, come back and watch this video. And then push pause, go ride your bike, come back, and resume the video and thank me down in the comments if I helped you. So my third tip for the day is to find an instructor slash change instructors. So kind of sounds a little confusing at first, but what I mean is if you haven't found the right instructor that fits or meshes with your personality type, you're probably not going to be motivated to ride the bike. You might just kind of be like, ah, I haven't really been having fun or getting a good workout in. So if that's the case, then find an instructor or if you've been with the same instructor and you're getting a little bored with your workout change it up for me personally what works is i have two or three instructors that i like to flip between depending on what i see as the ride for the day or the previous day or sometimes the music um, you know those are the factors that influence me and i know from my personal experience and my wife's personal experience that the wrong instructor is just kind of makes the ride blah and you know, you just have to, you know yourself better than anyone else and you have to analyze that and go, okay, is this the right instructor for me or should I look somewhere else? And keep finding, because there are several different instructors. There's gonna be one that you can at least enjoy and get a good workout with. Fourth tip for the day is to be consistent. If you show up once a week or twice a week, that's just not enough to get results. It just isn't for anybody. I don't care who you are. If you do one or two rides a week, it's just not gonna be enough. I at least recommend three rides a week. 
For my own personal goals, I go for five rides a week. Sometimes I can't hit that, but I try my absolute best to go for five rides a week. So five rides a week, most of the time I do 30 minute rides. Sometimes I'm, if I'm really tired or sore, I may just go for a 20 minute ride. Um, or if you just don't feel up to it or maybe you get sick or something, look into some of the Peloton yoga. I mean, I like to do those and I honestly am striving to do them more just because yoga is so good for the body and for the flexibility. So you can always alternate doing yoga instead of a ride or something is so physical that pounds your body if you're feeling a little bit under the weather or just too sore. You have to listen to your body. And again, you know yourself better than anyone else. So you have to make that call for you. The fifth and final tip of the day is going to be find a routine or set a ride schedule. So I used to subscribe to Men's Health and of course I've read so many different articles online and it's, it's just proven over and over again that people that set a time or a scheduled time each day to work out or people that eat at the same time or go to bed and wake up at the same time are healthier, happier, and more likely to succeed. So I really feel like a routine is important. It's important for all of us. So I'm not saying that you have to get up at the same time every day, but find a time that works for you. What I've been doing over the last week, especially now, because we just hit daylight savings time, so it's getting dark earlier. So by the time I get home from work, it's kind of dark and I'm not as motivated. And I know that about myself. So now what I've done is I started waking up 45 minutes earlier than I used to. That gives me 10 minutes or so in the morning to wake up, stretch a little bit, and then get on my bike. I do a 30 minute ride and then I go ahead and get ready for work. And then by that time, when I get home from work, if I wanna do something extra, I can. Or I can do like a yoga before bed and then technically I get two workouts a day, even though the yoga is more of a relaxing thing. Um, that's, a, that's a schedule and a routine that's working for me. So what I'm saying is you have to find that for you. Some of us, our jobs or school or careers may not allow for that because maybe you travel, but what you have to do is just find the best routine that you can for yourself and then do it as much as you can. Okay, so those are my five tips, but I have a couple bonus ones for you. So here we go. The first bonus tip I have for you, this one is actually during the ride. I'm competitive. So what happens for me when I get into a ride, let's say, you know, I've, it's a pre-recorded ride. It's already been ridden and I see the list of everybody on the right hand side of the screen and you know there's like 8,000 or more people in there sometimes and let's just say there's 8,000 and competing against 8,000 people is a lot and it can tend to just kind of aggravate me because maybe I don't perform well so what I like to do is click here now so here now may limit it to 40, 50, 60 people and then I like to envision that I'm in a spin class in a gym and I walk in and there's 40, 50, 60 people however many in that class and then I try to compete with that class. Not necessarily with the class, but I, you know, I look, really I'm competing with myself, but it, that right there, that little trick helps motivate me to do my best that ride, instead of just sitting back, because we've all been there and we sit back, grab your phone and just kind of sit back and, and just pedal nonchalantly. Um, that, that's, that's a pretty bad thing to do. So try to keep your cell phone as well. Um, little bonus tip, try to keep your cell phone you know, to, to a minimum whenever you're writing because it'll help you from cheating and looking down. And again, if you pay attention to the here now and just really try your best each ride, that's what's helped me. Which kind of leads right into my next bonus tip is have miniature goals, or I call them mini goals for each ride. So let's say you get into that ride, you click here now and there's 40 people. Okay, I wanna finish in the top 70% of those 40 people or the top 50%, the top 10%. Set that goal right during your warm up. Most of the rides have like a three or four minute warm up, that one song. So go ahead and go slow, do whatever you got to do in that warm up. And then from there, do whatever you have to do to get. Cause you can scroll and go, okay, the top person has this output and that's your goal. You know, you want to get up in that whatever percentile. So set miniature goals for yourself. Every day is different based off of your energy, how your body feels, but every day you should have a miniature goal. And whether it's a big one or a small one, set those miniature goals. And the last bonus tip I have for you is just to have fun. You know, you bought this bike for a reason. Again, you found your why. So go back to that and then just have fun reaching your goals because you don't want to get discouraged off of the bike because maybe you're not reaching the, the weight that you want or anything like that. But the scale is very misleading. So if you're judging 
how you look and how you feel based off of a number on a scale, you're also doing that wrong because, you know, I'm guilty of it. I know that you probably are too. We all step on the scale and we're like, whoa, I expected that to be down because I've been riding my bike for six months straight. But the reality is you taking that 20, 30, 45 minutes, whatever it is that you do on that Peloton each day, hopefully five days a week, um, that is time that's strictly for you and it's showing you that you care about yourself and it helps with your confidence. I know because I struggle with you know, anxiety and uh, panic attacks and stuff like that. And when you take this time for yourself to ride, that's just for you. And yes, maybe you set a little goal, like when you ride, obviously I wanna look good and you know, maybe that helps my family and my spouse and stuff like that, but the, the goal is not for them. You're not riding for them, they're just part of the goal. Really, when you do a ride, it is strictly time for yourself. And when you make that time for yourself, it helps you feel better. And in terms of that, you, you get more radiant, you glow, and you put out better vibes out into the world. And so it just makes people want to be around you as well. And that really gives you an energy and confidence boost. So, you know, again, it kind of circles back to just have fun and enjoy the process, you know? And whether it was like, okay, I set out to lose 50 pounds or whatever that is, eventually maybe you get there or maybe you don't. But that process in between you getting from point A to point B is what really what shapes and defines you as a person. So don't underestimate that and don't get let down by a number on a scale. So that's gonna wrap it up for today, guys. I really hope that I was able to motivate you. If I did, leave a comment down in the section below. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you don't like this video, hit the thumbs down twice. And as always, we'll see you guys in the next video.